Welcome to the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast with Mike Kincaid and Jake Goebel. Join them as they experience specialty coffee and document their journey. These friends explore roasts and roasting methods, brewing equipment and techniques, and review the cafes they visit along the way. Thanks, Brioni, and thank you for joining us for episode 59 of the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast. Mike and I are back inside his garage, breaking into the Ilio Bullet R1. Mike has seasoned it. He's also put a few roasts through it, played around with it a little bit, so he's pretty confident, and we walk you through a roast. If you like it, please let us know. If you don't, please let us know, because we just grab two microphones and freestyle it. What do you mean are we just going to wing it? That's all we do. Thank you so much for joining the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast, the voice you hear right now. This sweet and sultry voice, this is Jake Goble, but I'm not alone. Oh, no. I'm sitting here on location in romantic Prescott Valley, Arizona, with the one, the only, Mike Kincaid. What's up? Hey, Mike. Hey. I'm so nervous about holding this. I think I'm going to screw up. So if my audio is bad. Your audio is always bad. It's not Jake's fault this time. You know what? You're we're hand holding. Hand holding? Hand <laughs> we're holding? hand holding. We're hand holding. It's because Mike and I are hand holding, and it's very <laughs> difficult to get good audio quality we, while we're hand holding. We are hand holding. Yes. In this journey together called yes. life. Yes. Yes. But what else is going on is this Mike and I are back in the Kincaid garage. I don't even know what episode it was that we were doing this with the Be More, but we did the same thing. We set up a, a camera, we set up some microphones actually we only had one microphone one that we mic. had to share back then now we actually have two microphones so that's a kind of a step in the right direction and we're sitting here with the most important addition yeah to the orange cactus coffee family the ilio bullet r1 maybe you can hear it in the background yes well, well hold on it, the buzzing that you hear is the bullet let me let me bring the mic over to it so you can identify that sound it's really quiet. You know, I mean, we're not That's doing anything drum. just yet. Right now we're, we're preheating and we got that going a little. Uh, it even says, this is what I'm looking at. I am looking at. Here, a, let's do this real quick. A, a, that she's talking. She can talk. So this is what I'm looking at. I am looking at a barrel. It's about an, a foot in uh, diameter or radius. Yeah, a foot diameter. Go ahead, Mike. All right, yeah, she's before it talk. cools off, I wanted to... She's going to talk here. She's Listen talk here. to this gal. Preheating. That's it. That's her. She talks to you. She talks, she says, welcome to the Ilio Bullet experience. Are you something, ready? Something along those lines. When you first start her up. So she has got four legs. She almost looks like um, a little bit of a, a donkey. Is that or what they call it? A donkey? A, a donkey. Oh, a lot yeah. of things have four yeah. legs. Hold on I a think. second. I got to sneeze real quick. Oh, what's that mean? And just mute. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, right. we're on the fly. All right, there we go. Fly in my so face. yeah, well, we're in the garage. There's no, there's no nothing. You know, like um, in workshops, they have aren't don't they call them donkeys? What do they call those things with the that that you set the pieces of wood on in order to saw them? Uh, you're talking about a horse. A horse. Okay. Okay. Close enough. Okay. So Same whatever. A, a horse, like yeah, in the shop. Like a wood, a wood horse. Like a wood horse that you use in the shop. A stand to put. Okay. Yeah, if plywood we're not using on. the right word, that's all fine. Get your laugh out. Keep giggling. <laughs> that's fine. But you know what we're talking about. Yeah. So that's what it looks like. Only it's black. It's made out of plastic. And then this foot in diameter cylinder me- uh, made out of metal. Okay. Metal it's all plastic. metal. The it's drum all. is metal. And, and I would steel. say that's about two feet long. So if you can imagine this black cylinder, sleek black metal cylinder, and it's a, about a foot in diameter, and it's about two feet, two and a half feet long. Yeah. And on the front of it, it looks like a regular coffee roaster. It's got a little sniffer that has a wooden handle, and it's got a, an, a, an opening, a door, that looks like the big coffee guy coffee roaster, just smaller. Yeah, and it's got a nice solid handle on it, and then it's got um, a, a bean spout or a spout where we're going to put a, a hopper, a hopper in, yeah, a, a little bean, shoot, little a little bean, bean shoot. shoot, a little bean hopper that is going to go on top of it. That's where the beans go down, and then there is a circle that kind of sticks out, and it's got readings on it, and so it says a display bean panel. Pa- yeah, a display panel. There, there it is. It's um, kind of 
red numbers and letters. And it says heat and cool. It says P7 right now. And you can um, heat. A, there's a plus or minus where you can bring the temperature up, I'm assuming, or something yeah, else. You can control basically fan three variables. Yeah, heat, hold on, fan hold on speed. a second, Mikey. Let me well, just you looked finish at me telling like, them. You said, I don't know. And then Let I was me just jump finish in. telling them what I'm seeing here. Oh, okay. And then, because the, I'm an idiot. and, and so You're giving an observational overview. Of, of, of the layman. I'm with you. The layman. The layman. Somebody who's never used it or seen it or knows what they're talking about here. Gotcha. So it's got a bean temperature probe and a readout and a drum temperature probe and readout of some sort. And then it's got their, their cool ILEO logo kind of cut into it, which looks very sleek. Mm-hmm. And then there ha- there's a little USB light that just sticks off of it, and that shines down into a bowl. Now, this looks like a massive dog bowl, black on the outside, and it's like a colander on the inside. So that's what it, and though there's a filter on the inside of that, oh, and I guess that's where kind of the fan is blowing things out from. Is that correct? You got it. Perfect. So that's kind of what we're looking at. So you kind of got a little visual. Hopefully you weren't closing your eyes while you were driving to visualize the, the Ilio Bullet not very R1. Long. The profile, which I think is uh, a cue from the name, does look like mm, a little a bullet. bullet. It does look it, like a it's bullet. It's got like a little, especially a... Um, a Super Mario bullet is exactly what it looks like. Yeah. Or, like the Super Mario villain. Okay, you write yeah, the little bullet yeah. that flies down uh-huh. the thing to, to try and the kill The tip has got, it's, it's flat. Yeah. And then... Um, yeah. And it's, know, got a a little, cylinder it's got a little angry face on it. And there's got, this bullet, the very tip has got handles on yeah, it. Yeah, like at the boss level. Yeah. Especially the, when you're on the ship. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I know what you're talking That's about. That's exactly what it looks like. Got it. Got it. So yeah, we're preheating right now. We're just going to... Roast it. This is Jake's first time yeah. checking it out, Since seeing a roast the, drop. The only time I've been here for roasting was when we got the Bee More. Yeah. And when I say we, I mean Mike, but, you know, us, Orange Cactus Coffee. Together. When Mike started roasting with the Bee More, which was in February, and it I is now June. I think it maybe even was a little before that. January? Yeah. January? Right around there. Yeah. So... About five months ago. So it's about, oh, let's call it six months, just it's so it's longer. easier. But I think, yeah. Let's just six, call it six months so it's easy for us. So about six, six months ago, I was here for the introduction of the Be More once Mike had kind of had it dialed in and kind of knew what he was doing a little bit more with it. Sure. And now I'm here with the Bulliet. The Bulliet. The Bulliet. The Bulliet. R1. The Bulliet R1. The Ilio Bulliet R1. So uh, I've seasoned it, which is the first thing you have to do when it comes, which means you just mm. run through. You get a, a batch of poor green. Parsley. Green. You get parsley. Yeah. You throw it in there and you do three to five roasts, 500 grams at least, and you just take it. Does to, it matter? Oh, You take it to char box. Take it to the limit. Yep. <clears throat> you just wow. bring it up and you get the idea is. I, I was trying to talk Mike into selling those beans. Uh, he wasn't hearing it, though. But I was like, those look like charcoal. Those are perfect. Well, I thought um, I was talking to Manny about that, hey, I could probably uh, make some type of uh, facial cleanser. Blend. And sell it. You know, oh, we'll yeah. grind it up and sell it to have those products. Yeah. yeah. The idea is you, you go through the seasoning because you want to remove any of the production oil that is in there. That makes sense. And so it grabs all that. and then Because I don't want to taste production oil, oil in my blueberries to the face. That uh, sounds I, I'm nasty. I'm not sure if it would go That sounds well. nasty. But then also the oil uh, from the beans kind of coats the junk. The junk. <laughs> it coats <laughs> the junk? Is that what you said? Coats the drum. <laughs> Not exactly, but it does sound funny. <laughs> oh, okay. So it coats Green. the drum. And keeps it from rusting. And keeps it from it's rusting. It's a protective layer. So Cody, yeah, after the, you the do coffee that, oils. Exactly. Yeah. And so yeah. after you do that, then the next thing you have to do is remove the face and clean the IR sensor, um, which is a little glass on the inside. It's quite simple. You just remove six screws and wipe it down. I have some simple green, or you can use alcohol nice. swabs. So that's What been kind done. of alcohol did you use? Yeah. Or did you use the simple green? It's a green? weird one. Isofolium. Oh, okay. Iso- it wasn't whiskey. No, because they do like this like alcohol. they do this barrel aging, Heard where they put coffee inside whiskey barrels. I thought yeah. maybe there's are you whiskey roasting? Yeah, maybe there was some sort of connection. You call there. tech support. It's not. It's not. It's not you working. Clean the sensor. We yeah. cleaned it. Yeah, I, I used cleaned a little the sensor. Jack on it. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with Jack? Should I use Jim? Yeah, oh, right. that's bad. Oh, Maker's Mark. Oh, uh, that makes sense. That makes all the sense in the world now. <laughs> Yeah. And also to let you know, if you hear some slurping, there are some things that we are drinking. One, I am, okay. um, I, I, uh, Mike shared his Glacio vitamin water with me, this zero squeezed lemonade. 
And I am also drinking some Perk Coffee from the Ghostly Roaster. Big shout outs. Thank you, Ghost. Send us some Perk Coffee from Savannah, Georgia. Yep. Uh, from Georgia, Georgia. It was a Kenyan double A. And the flavor notes were tangerine, orange, and lemon, something other stuff. One of the, one of the notes, it was tangerine. Um, there and the go. other one was, sorry, it was tangerine, and the other one said exotic. Ooh, exotic. Yeah. That was, now is exotic. So whatever that means to you, it, it's in is, the cup. Is exotic, is that a, a flavor note or a mouthfeel? Because, right, because when you put juicy on there, it's a sensation. juicy is a mouthfeel. It's not a flavor. You can't taste juicy. You're not tasting juicy. No. But you're feeling juicy. Yeah. It's one for the palate, not the nose. It's the same thing. There you're you not go. tasting exotic. You're feeling exotic. You're experiencing it. Ooh, you're experiencing exotic. And I got to say, Perk, I'm experiencing it's a good. exotic. What do you think? Oh, yeah. It's a very it's really light good. roast. It's really good. It is, you know, I've been drinking more of this coffee, more black coffee lately. Then, then one is we're trying to dial in the king cup. So I feel like I've got to get my palate back on track because I, I don't want to talk too much here, but I am. So remember, we messed up when Chris Griffith came on the show. We messed up second crack coffee yeah. there in Florida. We messed up the name. Call them second roast. We called them second roast. So I ordered two pounds of their coffee and it ain't no joke. It is second it's crack. Dark. It's dark. It's black as It's dark. It's not that good. It's, I'm sorry. Much love. I appreciate you guys. Um, you know, 16 ounces to the pound, but there is a little to be happy not about. Your There's little to be happy. The coffee's not very good. The bags weren't very yeah. good. The packaging's not very good. There's little to be happy about. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that's, I'm just keeping, keeping it real. It real. Gotta I got to keep it real. So that's what I'm drinking because Mike hasn't made me any saguaro for a, in a little while. He's sick of making saguaro because you've been ordering it. And so thank you for that. Thank you for buying it. I, but it's kind of interfering with what I, my drinking. So well, in full disclosure, I did I did roast you up an order, right? and then we we, we well, sent it an offering, and then, then yeah. we got an order. Then we got an order, like, oh, and we buddy. took it. Yeah, sorry, this was yours, but <laughs> it's not yours we're anymore. Shipping it out. So really, it's the missus that is unhappiest. Well, I did ask you. She's like, "What is this garbage that you're making me drink?" I'm like, "Baby, I bought two pounds of it. I bought two pounds. You're gonna have to drink uh, it and just be happy." Careful. Yeah. You yeah. know what happens. Grounds for divorce. Exactly. Grounds for divorce in, in some countries if you don't uh, keep up with the coffee production. I'll make and, you know. Well, I have to dial this in with the Sorraro. So and that's so what I I'll have take. To practice and so I'll take some of your practice batches. There you go. But, um, but we've been trying to dial in the king cup as well, which yes. is, so we're trying to get a little bit more tangerine, stone fruit, lemon. Yeah. Sorry, just the, the birds singing. It was just Great. cool. I wanted to, I hope you guys heard that. I think you can hear that. I will, maybe they can. Maybe they can. Well, maybe maybe they you can. can add it and post. No, I mean, add it and post. There were really birds, bro. There were really, really birds. I think that's a macaw. I didn't know they had macaws out there in that's northern That's not Arizona. a macaw in Prescott. <laughs> what are they doing? What are those boys doing? So mm, good we're stuff. trying to dial in the kink up. So I've been trying to get my palate back on track to drink these uh, black coffees or just plain coffees. I, I don't want to say just black coffee because that makes it, it sound burnt and bitter and charcoal. I like that term. And, and it's not. It's not. It's flavorful. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's not even black. It's, a, it's plain brown. isn't any better. Plain I, isn't any better because it, it tells you, you there's a bunch of flavor Natural? notes. Natural? Is that better? Natural. I've been drinking it natty? No, because natty has, has production it's got meaning. cross reference, yeah. multiple meanings. Yeah, because if, if I'm telling you I'm rocking an Ethiopian natty, you're expecting blueberries to the face because you're expecting a naturally processed. You're not expecting a clean, crisp, washed Ethiopian or Kenyan. Nope. You're expecting blueberries to the face instead of stone fruit. If I show up with a tangerine and you're expecting blueberries, whoa. So we Whoa. need a better name. We need a we need a better name. What do you think? Than just black coffee or plain call? coffee. Yeah. What's I don't better? know. I don't know. The king cup. The, we're 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 well, making a cup we're fit have for a, cameo. a king. We're gonna have a cameo. A cameo. Mike's wife just walked by, um, ignoring us as is appropriate for a woman of her stature <laughs> and position in life, uh, not to be seen with hooligans in public. 
Yeah. And I don't know who they are. I, I don't get, know why they're in I don't my garage. E- I don't even know those dudes. Why, the, why is the garage open? The garage is not supposed to be open. Your secret habits are supposed to stay secret. <laughs> I'll tell you why it's open. Because when what? I got done seasoning, yeah. I had about so it was uh, hot in here? three kilos. No, it was actually quite cool. Three kilos. Three kilos. Do you, do you always have to talk like a drug dealer when you're talking about roasting your coffee? How many pounds well, is that? It, actually, this is fitting. Because when I got done, I took it to second crack quite dark. And the first yeah. aromas were, this smells like Pete's. Like, it oh, reminded yeah. me of yeah. Pete's. This but smells nasty. I let it sit in the garage overnight, yeah. and it was so skunky. Like, it smelled like skunk. It, nasty It smelled skunk. very strong in here when I came, when I came over. Yeah. I, I rolled up in here, and I was like, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. That was taking a second crack. Yeah. That but, was second it crack in smoke, it. It's pretty... It, this thing is... The smoke is very... I'm surprised. And I think it has a lot to do with because it removes the chaff to the back instead yeah. of keeping it... Like, the more keeps it in. So, I think that increases the smoke it produces right because the chaff burns exactly yeah exactly so this removes it not until you get into second and past second smoke was then kind of billowing out out, and i got the shop fan going to blow it you're not you're not going to be taking the king cup and you're not going to be taking the saguaro to second crack very few i mean our the swar you know we don't take any to second crack i however just to to preface i think the coffee will dictate where it wants to be that's true so if, if it tastes better at a certain spot, I think having hard rules like, well, we never do this. We never go to second well, crack, bro. what if the bro. coffee's better at that? Yeah, you never try. I hear you. And what about if that's what your customers want? At least have something that they want. Like exactly. when I went down to Peixoto, mad love to Peixoto. You know we love Peixoto. We got a huge Peixoto. brand crush on Peixoto. We do. But here's the deal. Spencer's I went down it. and I, I went. Yeah, Spencer is rocking it. And I, I, I went in looking for something for the missus and they had nothing for me. Yeah. Like, sorry, bro. It's all light wave and fruity flavor. That lives down in Chandler. Also it's all it's all fruity flavors here. For something a little more chocolatey. Yeah, and, and a little more chocolate, a little more base. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm, really like, no, no, really I'm all about that base, about that base, no treble. I'm all about that base, about that base, no treble. No. Uh, very good. Coffee. Very good. I mean, nice. I'm talking about coffee. No, I'm with you. It, yeah. I think uh, musical notes help describe. For me, they of do. Coffee. For me, they do. I, I want some base in there. It's a good connection. So, we. We're probably ready to drop a, a batch here and uh, yeah. see what this thing does. Oh, oh. the oh. Mrs. We're, about, we're about ready to get run over. All right, perfect. Thank you. So, back from the interruption. I don't know what we were talking about, but basically. You were singing. Well, yeah, were but singing. then I was saying we were going to get run over, and so I had to dive out of the way. She from in reverse, not forward. Oh, oh drive. okay. So, I didn't need to dive out of the don't way. Don't you think it should be F instead of D? Right. Forward and, yeah, and reverse. Instead of, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. It does make sense. You have drive, or it could be ND, not drive. Yeah. Or reverse drive. Yeah. There, there's something left to be desired there. I think you're right. Put it in drive. What does drive mean? Am I not driving when I go Can backwards? Not, yeah, exactly. Can I not drive in reverse? What am I doing if I'm not driving? Forward. Am I just along for the ride? I put it in reverse and I relinquish all control? Yeah. And it's like it's, it's on autopilot from here. Nothing exactly. more I can do. They didn't think that one through. Nothing more I can do. That's why the elderly ram into garages and stuff all the time. Ooh, so the D for done. It just it it changed uh, tone temperature. So the ooh, what does it say? I don't know if you heard that. It's flashing. It's no, a I charge. Didn't hear it. So charge? you might have heard that faintly. So it says charge, and now the screen flashes. So what that does is it's saying I am thermal. Okay, let me try it again. Okay. I am thermally stable. Uh huh. And ready to roast. So you have a consistent temperature from front to back. Oh, there, charge. Again. Yep, it's and like it will sit there. It's like wait for you. I think Ilio is. Have we named her yet? Because Siri is what Siri. Gonna, what are we going to call her? You mean? Yeah. What are we going to call her? I don't know. I think. Uh, but she said charge. She's like she's leading the charge here, Manny. Do you hear that? What? Do you hear it in Indiana? She's saying charge. Get out. Move forward. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What about different types of bullets? Oh. What if we did a play? Yeah, like. Like the nine milli, the yeah. forty-five different calibers or different charge. So let's or charge it so we can uh, keep this podcast on time. Okay, charge so it. She's ready to go. Charge it. You ter- put okay. your mic down, and, and I'll just narrate. Play play. I'll narrate. Right, I'll narrate what we've got going on. All right, Mikey has finally relinquished the microphone. Now we're back to my sweet and sultry voice. He's digging in boxes down by his feet, and there are little bags of sweet Marias. They look like little two-pound bags, one-pound bag. How much is in there, Mike? These are one pound. These are little one pound bags. They are clear. They are see through, that which is the same thing as clear. And um, they're from Sweet Maria's. So right now he is looking at an Ethiopian Gedeo Zone Gedeb Asasa. 
Let me, let me just read it to you real quick. They recommend going city to city plus. The flavor notes are floral jasmine, bubblegum aroma, turbinado sugar, sweet lime, lemon water, graham cracker crust accents, so delicate, vibrant acidity. So that's what he's got. Now he brought the scale out from the kitchen, and, he's, and I'm looking at little coffee trays. Now, these coffee trays are pretty cool. Are these from Sweet Mia? Yeah, they're from Sweet Marie's as well. They're the ones that you normally see, like when, when people are out cupping, and um, they've got the beans that are roasted, like in these trays. Are they called sample trays? Is that what they're called? I think so, for the most part. These so, like yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. I think Mike is, are you going to weigh out 500 grams? That's what I'm do. So he's weighing out 500 grams, and if this is boring, I apologize in advance. Well, not 500, sorry. We're okay. Do a half a pound, I mean, because that's what I've been doing. What, what's a half a pound? Oh, that's too much. He's totally messing this up. Is it, are you nervous because the camera's on? No, I grabbed is, the wrong bag. All right. Maybe I should maybe I should switch to something else. Maybe we should switch to something Banny G That's recommends nice or something. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that. How much how much are those uh, trays, Mikey? Sweet Maria's have three of them for like ten bucks. So ten bucks for three. Certainly not a bad tool to have on hand. Now, let me get back to this uh, perk coffee that um, that that. Uh, um, Ghostly Roaster sent us. It is a Kenya Kianderi AA. Tangerine, honey, and exotic. It is a washed process. 16 to 1700 feet, uh, meters above sea level. Probably roasted in Savannah, Georgia. Just throw feet on it. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Perk, just throw feet on it, homie. Don't nobody do nothing in meters out here. The, the nice thing, it's got a feature, the bullet does that. When, as soon as I drop this in charge, it's going to sense that beans are added. And it's going to automatically start the roast mode. That's cool. So Mike has put a funnel, or a, what, are the, what are those called? A hopper. A hopper on the top. It's the same thing as a funnel. And that's where he's going to dump the beans in. And now they fall into this drum, and this drum is spinning. I'm going to let you listen to it real quick. And it tells us the bean temperature. It tells us the drum temperature. And I guess... How do we know what we're... Do we have something dialed in, or are we just going by hand here? Well, right now, um, we're still learning and playing with it. I have a computer coming that it will hook up to. One of the things I was a little disappointed about is that the, um, they didn't have their software available for Mac. Come on now. To- Come on now, Ilio. It's supposed to be available, but that's okay. I bought a dedicated little PC, a couple hundred bucks, that's going to be hooked up and just live out here. And that's when we'll get it dialed in. So right now, but we have all the information we need um, on the screen. It's just not being recorded. So. Gotcha. So it's in, impossible to duplicate unless you manually duplicate it. Exactly. You could take time. Nice, here, nice. I can hit the drum temp, and it will give me the rate of rise. And I can monitor that. And if you're a Scott Rail fan, you could always make sure that that's kind of uh, declining. So you can do everything manually. Um, I mean, without a computer, because of the information panel. Computer just helps. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, I'm behind you here, and not that I'm, not that I'm switching things up on you, but... Oh, I see. The seasoning greens. Ten pounds of seasoning beans. They, look, they do look kind of nasty. They were nasty. Sm- even if... They do look nasty. They look like junk. Even if you smell them, they stunk. Yeah. Like, they weren't good. And they were like two bucks a pound from Mill City. Yeah. Uh, um, one of the best places we found to get some cheap beans for And they're specifically sold. For that for purpose. For that purpose, yeah. To season your, season your roasters. Yeah. So, it, it's cool to watch. I don't know. The, are the beans evenly distributed throughout the drum? Yes. I wonder how that's ha- how that, what that process well, is like. Well, one of the things you got to make sure of that I, they didn't make mention of, but I, you, make sure your bolt's level. At first, mine was not, oh. and the door was doing a little bit of popping. Like, the beans were just, seemed like they were a little too much pressure. It wasn't yeah, hurting yeah. it, but I could hear the door, yeah, and yeah, it still yeah. does it occasionally. So you got a little shim underneath I one threw of the a legs, level so. on it, and I was, the, the face, the front was tilted, tilted down. down. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That and makes so a lot of sense. the beans weren't even, so I leveled it. Make sure it, you're level. Put a little shim in Make there. Make sure you're on the level. Table wasn't very level. Yeah, yeah. So it's not necessarily the bullet wasn't level, it's the table you're roasting on is not level. Yeah. 
I don't so know. Mikey removed the hopper and then replaced the opening with a plug. So the hopper does not stay in there the whole time. The hopper comes off, the plug goes on. Exactly, exactly. And so I'm not, I've only done the seasoning and four roasts. So I, I don't know, you know, how to control Still working it, it. 100% Still working yet. It. Yeah, yeah, One yeah. of the things that they do recommend is stay consistent with your batch sizes because yeah. that will help you dial it in. Yeah, As with yeah. any little roaster. Try and eliminate some of the variables and just work maybe with this one. I'm going to work with the heat and the fan speed um, and try and shoot for a nice time roast. And uh, also when the computer comes, we'll be able to plug it in and see what's going on a little bit better. Yeah. I can see the, col- the beans are starting to change color. Yeah, so, so I don't know how long we've been roasting. It's not been long. It's not many minutes at all. right here. Three oh. minutes, 25 we've been, seconds. We've been, and it, is, it has gone from kind of a, a greenish. Hold on. Kind of a, a greenish, palish, mm, vampire from blade color to now they look like corn nuts floating around in yeah. there. They're, they're a yellow color, and That's the what, smell is starting to come off. I'm starting to... A little popcorn. Yeah. Little, uh, yeah. It yeah, does. It smells, like, the, it smells uh, like popcorn. Maillard reaction. Mm. You can see and smell the chemical reaction happening. But we haven't had a crack yet. No, and we won't. See, and one thing, the bean temp... Uh, up to around three, so far what I've noticed on the machine, when that reads around 310, a little above, is when I, I've heard the um, first crack happen. When you can start now, hearing the crack. I've heard it clearly several times, but there's also been a couple times I haven't heard it at all, and I think that's due to not having enough energy it's, going into it's it. It's doo-doo? I think that's doo-doo as well. It's doo-doo. <laughs> it's doo-doo. <laughs> that's doo-doo. So I'm going to drop the heat, and like I said... I would generally like first crack to I'm be seeing a little, a little bit longer. Bit of, I'm seeing a little bit of smoke coming out. Out the back. Nice thing about this, it's not hot. Oh, okay. Like, it really, you can touch it, and it is very uh, insulated very well. Yeah. It really is. So, now, the, what, the way that he turned the heat down and the fan down is there are... Turn the fan up. Buttons. Sorry. The heat down and the fan up, there are plus or minus buttons on there, and those are controlled P5 and F4. Right? So are there, there, yeah, P there for numbers? Power, and power. you go 1 through okay. 9, and then F for... Fan, fan speed. Fan, yeah, 1 and through so 9. And so those are the things that control your bean temperature and, then I can and your drum temperature. And I can also switch to D for drum speed and ah. change how fast the drum's rotating. Oh, it just turned from yellow. It is now brown. And so we can, we can hit the little It is dryer. a light brown. And you can take a look. Oh, you could, yeah. You could they are them. looking like a very light milk chocolate, like milk chocolate that's been mixed with a little bit of... White chocolate. So we're probably approaching first crack a little quicker than I would like. When do you normally want to get the first crack? It's faint. It's starting. Yeah. yeah. There it is. Not sure if you can hear those little pops, yeah. but yeah. it's starting. I think we can um, hear those little pops. Let so me... I'm going to drop the power down one more. Keep the fan speed right at five. When do you normally want to? Well, this get is a small crack. batch. We're hitting it right about six minutes. Um, I would like it to be a little longer. Six around, and a half, seven? Yeah, I mean, for a full batch, hitting it around nine, drop it. It depends on the roast, too. It depends on what you're going for. Mm, what are we going for with this Ethiopian? Ethiopian? Yeah. What we're is, so excited, we're not even speaking very what are we doing? What are we trying to get to with this Ethiopian? I'm going to take it to a nice city, city plus. I'm going to keep it light. I don't want to get too much of the roast flavor in there because... Um, we want to we want to retain some of the characteristics that, of the bean. From on that city city plus scale, full city plus all that type of stuff. Where's the Nordic uh, roasting, Mike? Sub city, sub city. I'm smelling it. Smells like popcorn. So you can see that that kind of looks. Yeah. That's almost like a Nordic. They pull it. They drop it. So sometimes. He, so he's got this little trier, two gram that trier, pulls, yeah. that pulls beans out. And there's about 10 beans in there. Yeah. We've been roasting about seven minutes. Yeah, we're first crack still rolling. I mean, there's, there's, for the most part, you want first crack to be a nice rolling crack. I mean, you have enough sufficient energy to start. There's a clear start and a clear end. Okay. Um, right now, it's, it's dragging a little bit much, so. It's kind of like that popcorn, like the two or three that keep popping. Yeah. Exactly. After, after you're already done. But it's okay. We're at about a minute and a half of first crack, and that's a good... And I think it's just about stopping, so... 
Yeah. We got a beam me, temp saying 330. This. Drum temp is also right around 330. So now we're Yeah, I don't close. hear a whole lot of crack in there. There was just kind of that you hear the, the drum rolling. Yeah. And, you know, if you have too much energy, you'll roll right in the second. What's energy? The bean temp, the drum temp, or all of it? All of it. All of it? Okay. You'll roll right... How now? You'll just keep running right into second crack? Well, I'm just saying, if you have too much energy, you won't be able to find when first crack ends. You'll, you'll be... You know, if you're waiting for that moment to drop the beans, all of a sudden second crack is queued up because you have too much energy. Oh, I you, see. You, so, and which... We're so, getting, when are we dropping the beans? Are we going to drop it at time? We're getting pretty close so here. So he's opening, he's increasing fan speed, So has the power level at four. We're looking at bean temp and drum temp are about even, 336 degrees. They are even at 336 degrees. The drum and the beans are the same temperature. Okay, we're bringing down the power down. Power down, Mikey, power Don't down. Don't use this as a guide at all because no, not I'm at just all. winging it. I'm just giving you a play-by-play. -play. We're actually still playing enjoyed. with this Ilio. I've actually enjoyed not having the laptop and just trying to like... Yeah, we're not doing anything. We're, we're playing, playing almost, with the new toy. Even I've got all these technical... Yeah. Okay, so here we go. We're playing with the new toy. That's it. So yes, this is by no means a guide. This is just a play-by-play -play of the new toy. So you hit the button and you Yeah. Hit now what does the PRS do? It changes the it power, uh, roast, and then cool. Okay. Or shut down. I okay. Think. Power roast and shut down. Oh, cool. So he hits the cool button, and that turns the fan for the beans on. It's kind of the fan that that yeah, the is cooling tray fan. the cooling tray fan is now turned on, and all that those beans are just flying on out of there. Now there's no movement for them. Is that what the spoon is for? Yep. Mike's going to start getting some movement for these beans and try to dissipate that heat. And he's um, moving them around by hand with a with a spoon. It looks that looks like um, and to be real honest with you, it looks like I stole a, that from the kitchen. Yeah, but it I looks like um, it's probably pretty loud that fan going. Pampered chef, you know. What I found though is this cooling tray is actually very sufficient. You don't even need to stir that much because it pulls the air pretty evenly through the beans. It just pulls the air. You right just through I think the, the key is. I found that if you give it a shake and make it a level bed, that's oh. your best. Yeah. Like, I think that helps bed. because then, you know, just like with brewing, you know, all the air is going through the beans evenly. Now, Mike, one of the things that, the, one of the reasons why we wanted to get on the Ilio is that it is a, possible to do consecutive roasts with it. It is. And so in this mode, you can hit the F1 button and it says BAC for back to back roast. Back to back roast. And I, and I hit preheat. And now it's, preheating or it's actually what it's doing it's restabilizing itself for my um, next roast yeah so i i have it at 320 right now uh, as far as a uh, fahrenheit for what i want the drum to be set at so it's bringing it back down because we're above that i so see. in yeah, this we were case in the we're coming back down and we're going to stabilize get it a nice consistent uh drum temp and then it will tell us and we can drop the next batch we in can a drop the next here. batch in there we could drop it right now but it's good to just wait let it get Right, back right. to its, its uh, charge temp. Now, and the, and how the long is this going to take, right? Because we want to cool these in four minutes. They're already done, pretty much. They're already done. You can feel them. They're a little warm, but they're not roasting. Oh, wow. Yeah. When I did full one kilogram batches, it cooled quite quickly. And I stirred it, though. A little more beans, so I, I was stirring it. Yeah. But you can tell we're a couple minutes in, and it's pretty much... It's cool to the touch. A little bit of warmth, but nothing more. Yeah. Certainly not. They're certainly not 300 degrees. I can tell you that much. And then I can, if I want, not 100. Probably degrees, can hear us anything. better. I can turn the fan down on the uh, cooling tray, which I just did, and turn it back up. So you're you're not using your homemade cooling tray at all anymore with not the Ilio. Not for the Ilio, no. No. Which that has been. I know there's so many cool things about this little roaster, but, right? But the yeah. biggest difference for me is not blowing chaff all over the garage and having to vacuum it every single out time. of the sky. Yeah, I yeah. just would vacuum. I had a routine of everything. I would move and vacuum under, over. So where's the chaff now? Is it inside the Ilio? And yeah, you just pull it out? You just pull it out and dump it? Yeah, it's brilliant. Wow. It works really well. I remember when I went down to uh, Press Coffee for their cupping and they showed me their roaster. They just have these huge buckets full of chaff. Yeah, 
That's what it was like. And, and they it say looked... the people take it like farmers come and pick them oh, up or they? something. Yeah. I can't remember who it was now. They use it for compost came, or something? They use it for something. Yeah. Because I know you can use coffee grounds for compost. They use the chaff for something. And I can't remember what it's for, what, yeah. what it was. Yeah, that's it. And so I'll turn this off. I'm actually going to cool it because we're not going to do any more. So. Yeah. Now cooling. Now cooling. Take that off. So now uh, the roaster is cooling itself down. Just rotates the drum slowly, kicks on the fan. And really, I mean, we do have the garage door open, so that makes it nice. I don't have any venting set up. It's not too bad. It's not bad at it's all. It's not too bad. I can be- smell a little bit, and that is it. The Be More produced, like I said, a little more smoke. And I think because of the chaff inside the system. I wonder how many roasts you could get through without... You know, without it bothering you in here. Well, I usually have the fan. I have a little shop fan yeah. running. Yeah. And I've done, I can keep, it, it clears it out almost instantly. Just keep going. My goal, though, is, depending on where we put it permanently, is to have a little vent. Yeah. Um, but I was quite surprised at how little smoke there was, unless you get into second crack. And then it was billowing. Now, another vision kind of for Orange Cactus Coffee, Mike, in the past has been this, this thought, this concept where you're like, hey, if we ever have a bigger roastery or roaster, bigger operation. Roaster, roasting yeah. operation, that you thought about having just like four or five Ilios set up right next to each other, like a bay of them, yeah, which, instead of one which would look cool. Kilo. Instead of one 12 we kilo, got 12 you, got, <laughs> you, got, you got five one kilos or 12 one kilos yeah. or 10 one kilos. That would be madness. Um, now that you've been, now that you've experimented with the Ilio a little bit, are you still thinking along those lines? Or are you like, um, no, I really want this 15 kilo. What, what's that? What's the, the funky, the turbine? Wind turbine the brand. Yeah, the Loring. Yeah. Do you want now a 15 kilo Loring? Is that kind of what you got your eyes set on instead of like, nah. the, the thought is cool of having five little guys lined yeah. up and, and putting in work, but nah, just give me a big Loring and, and uh, I'll, I'll be good. Uh, exactly. That's a good question. I, I think the answer is both. I think depending on what you need for a shop, and if you have, say you want to have three or four different offerings and you don't need to drop. Um, 20 kilos. Exactly. 10 you kilos. You just need to drop maybe a couple, you know, two, three kilos, and you want to dial it in real quickly. I think this machine is, is perfect for that. So I think it depends on the application. I still have plans to use the Beemore for even um, sample roasting. Yeah. Like if I want to go real low, less than 100 grams or 100 grams, Bullet's not the best for that. They claim that some people do it, but it doesn't hit all the probes and all the sensors. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's not ideal. So but the, but I the think there's more, just different but purposes. What about trying to get the the roast from the bee more dialed into the um, ILEO? Is it because you can see, like on the roast master, you can see the roast curve of mm-hmm. temperature? Does that kind of stay the same? Like, well, I know where I want to be with this amount of coffee at this you know time and yeah. this heat. Do I be, the bean temp? Do I can I just duplicate that on the ILEO? That's where I'm going to start. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to use that as a place to start. But my prediction, and we'll see if it comes true, is I think because of the efficiency of this roaster and because I can control the air, yeah. I think I'm going to be able to not only get um, the, the saguaro, the Costa Rica we currently have, yeah. dialed in, I think uh-huh. it's going to be a little better. You think it's going to be better? I think it's going to be a little I'd better. I'd like to see that. And I'd I like say to this taste not that. completely uneducated because the first four roasts I did, yeah. I thought I kind of botched a little bit with this at least i didn't get to where i wanted to go and it was and i it tried was forgiving. a couple this morning i was like this tastes pretty promising yeah, this is pretty good yeah. now did you does it have an auto shut off or anything like that like what what are some of the things that that you're looking at well this is what or, or some of the hurdles that i anticipate because with the be more one of the hurdles was cooling the the coffee mm-hmm. we had a hack for that actually you created a hack where you yeah, pull it out some- and you fan it, yeah. and you, you vacuum chaff out of the air. Yeah. The other thing was probes. There was no way to, to, to kind of know what was going on with the beans because you couldn't actually censor the beans because of the drum inside. Or even the environment. Temp- so the so temp- you'd, you'd stick a probe in there, and you'd kind of get as close to the beans as you could, but you could never really get them in the beans. Correct. So that was one hack that you used there. Mm-hmm. The, th- the third, I guess, hack is that is with the application of power, which sometimes the Be More rebels against 
And if you're not there to press a button, it shuts down on you as you're trying to manipulate the power yeah, and the heat. You get too hot. So there's, that's kind of well, three, not, not necessarily weaknesses, limitations, but limitations, limitations of the yeah, B-more. It's because, a great machine. Because the B-more, it really is bucks. kind of a, it's a, it's a $400 plug and play thing. It, exactly. was, it was never designed to do the things that you made it do. It was designed for me to throw little beans in there, run a pre-selected program, let it yeah. go through that, and then pull the beans out. Have some excellent coffee that's going to still beat anything you could buy at the grocery and store. And just be, and, and I made it. I made it, and exactly. it's fresh. Absolutely. So, but that wasn't good enough for us. We wanted the best for our, for our community, for, for, for you. We wanted to take it as far as it could go. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think you have taken it incredibly far, further than anybody I've seen or anything I've, I've tasted so far. But what limitations do you foresee with the Ilio? Well, there, the Ilio does, in, in similar fashion, have a safety feature, and rightfully so. When you get above a certain bean temp, um, I think it's 320, but I could be wrong. It will, every two minutes, it will which it, sound an alarm and say, hey, are you still there? We're good to go. Hey. And hit any button. Hello. Biggest difference in the world is it has an audible um, Audible? Alert. Audible alert. Oh, okay. Not audible, but an audible is that the wrong word? It is the wrong what word. What is audible? I don't know what audible is. I think it's like audible. A, audible. Audio, maybe it's just different pronunciation. Maybe. Or maybe you added a letter, <laughs> letter in there. I added a syllable. Audible. Um, it, it has a sound. Audible. Audible. An audible sound. Or audible. Or audible. Right. <laughs> Whichever. Whichever you want. Whichever you want to go with. Alio, alio, audible, audible. Right. right. Potato, that potato. Says, hey, that yells at you. The be more, that was the one thing I said, be more, you... Put a little tone because there would be many times I was roasting and it would go to that warning, that little... And it just flashes. And it just flashes. Yeah. It's like silently screaming. Yeah. I'm going to blow your roast. It's a silent scream and for coffee. Like a yawn is a attention. silent scream for coffee. Exactly. It, all of a sudden you hear the cooling fan kick on. So this, and that's the worst sound in the world. It is. When you're at 1 a.m. Yeah. When you're trying to get that last batch made or exactly. roasted. Exactly. So uh, that's a nice feature that it has. I still think um, really for a production roaster, batch size is still going to be a consideration. You know, when if you have a lot of orders or you have customers that are ordering 10, 15 pounds a week, if yeah. you're supplying cafes, yeah. you're still going to be doing a lot of roasting. Now, the other thing that, that comes to mind, Mike, is right now we still do roast to order. So if somebody, oh, sorry, I'm getting no, out, all out of right frame. Off. Your head's been cut off the whole time. Okay. So, I kept you out of the frame. Uh, good. Perfect. Perfect. People are going to appreciate that. When, when you watch the video, you're going to appreciate the fact that you don't have to look at me. We roast to order. Somebody places an order, yeah. then we roast it, we get it to them, it's super fresh. Yeah. That's not the case with a lot of the big boys. A lot of the big boys have a roast day of Monday and a roast day of Wednesday or Thursday. Wow. And so they ship out their coffee Monday or Thursday, yeah. or a roast day of Sunday and Wednesday, and they ship on Monday and Thursday. They have designated days. It's still fresh. It's just you might have to wait depending on when you ordered. So if you just, Correct. if you ordered, like say they shipped out that morning and you miss the cutoff, now you would right. wait three, four days right. till their next so, roast. So day. right now, if somebody orders from us on Friday, yeah. even in the evening, yeah. you'll either roast it Friday night or Saturday morning, mm -hmm. and we will get it out in the mail on Saturday morning. Yeah, because we can't. And then hopefully they get it Monday, yeah. or it, it will be in transport. Yeah, exactly. You know, Sunday you can't drop stuff off at the post office, but if their, truck is, their trucks are running and their planes are running, so it's already in the system to get to you. Yeah. Hopefully you get it Monday or delayed. Tuesday. That might be the biggest delay is a weekend because of Sunday. Yeah. But otherwise, like if you ordered it Monday, and even depending on when the order comes in, I might even roast it same day. Yeah, same. And we might but even get it out same out day. Next, next shipping day. Next available shipping right, day. Right, right. But, Which but, I think there's something to be said about that. There, now, is that a competitive advantage that you would like to continue to keep? Or do you think kind of with yes. the increased roasting power, you say, well, you know what? I want to... I want to go to, you know, Mondays and Mondays and Wednesdays or Sunday night and Tuesday night or Wednesday night, something along no, those lines. No, I think we can keep that because we can. Right. I think w when you get into the big roasters where you can't do little batches. Yeah, where they're doing. Your minimum batch is five hundred. kilos. Yeah. Or, you know, I, I think that's when, you know, I can still do, uh, I can still put in 16 ounces and, you know, get a yield of 12 ounces roughly and, and I've got my batch. Good you to know go. what I mean? So yeah. we can still do that, and I see no reason to stop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Plus, it's fun. This thing's, this thing's fun. Yeah, it looks fun. It looks cool. Ghostly said, uh, Ghostly Roaster said, there's something uniquely satisfying about opening up the little door and watching the beans dump out. And he's right. 
is something, you know, about a fixed drum roaster yeah. Yeah. where you don't have to take the drum out and dump it, but you pull the handle and it just like spits them out. Yeah. Um, I've enjoyed that. It's been fun. So. Cool. All right. You know what else has been fun? What? This podcast has yeah, been, it's been fun. different. Hopefully it, yeah. you find value in it. Hopefully and it, it turns out okay. Too noisy in the background and if all that. If you're still with us, thank you. We plan to have more um, coming on the bullet as we use it yeah. and figure it out. And uh, hopefully some more on location um, podcasts. I want to go to a local coffee shop that I went to for the first time. I think it was like Throwing Stone, Stepping Stone, Stone Throws, Throw Stone it's Step. It's Stepping Stone store. Something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. It's, got a, it's got a specific name, and I want to go podcast from there. So Sounds good. I think All it's right. fun. Gives you something else to look at, too, if you watch the videos. Ooh, yeah. So, thank you so much. We appreciate you guys. And we'll catch you next time. Adios. Thank you so much for listening. As always, you can find the show notes at orangecactuscoffee.com forward slash episode 59. If you like these type of shows, let us know. If you don't, please let us know. Uh, delighted to get your feedback. Delighted to have you on this journey with us. And we'll catch you next time. <laughs>